Welcome to Floss Tube and Variety Show number 131. Today is Friday, October 11th, 2024, and I'm Emily Williams in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Thanks for joining me. Thanks so much for joining me. So this is going to be possibly shorter than usual and not a lot to show in the way of cross stitch because I've had a week uh, much different, well, not much different, but somewhat different than I had imagined I would have. So, but let's get started on whatever it is. Floss tube means cross stitch normally, and variety show means something else. So we'll see. So cross stitch, um, I've been working on um, Mighty Acorn from this book. Blackboard, Blackbird, Blackboard, Blackbird Designs, Winds of Autumn. This book is full of great projects. I'm definitely going to make, going to work on at least one or two more in here. <clears throat> in fact, I'll show you one in a moment. And I finished Mighty Acorn. Uh, this was my first weekend of the month. Blackbird, um... BBD Weekend Sal, and I looked it up. I started it last August, so it took me more than a year of first weekends. I'm pretty sure I didn't work on it in the first weekend of January this year, but I probably worked on it the other, so it might have been mm, 14 or so, 13 or 14 first weekends. So I had debated... And I, in fact, I left till last the date and my initials down at the bottom, the date next to the tree here, and my initials over here. And I debated because I sort of imagined that this is a good um, birth sampler or for a child, for maybe my grandchild, should I ever have a grandchild. So I thought, well, maybe I'll leave that blank in order to... Um, Put the child's name or initials or something but other than putting the child's initials and the date his his or her birth date year there isn't room so i decided you know i'm just going to finish it as it is and it can be known as a um i mean it's just a sampler or a, it's actually not even really a sampler it has elements of, sam of sampler-ishness because it has a house and it has the saying, mighty oaks from little acorns grow. So I'm so pleased with that. And it, it you can't appreciate in a picture, or even if I hold it up close, you can't appreciate the perfection of the color selection for those little knobby things on the ends of each of those branch twig situations. They're really just very perfect. Now, what do I think of this fabric? This is 18 count salt bush uh, by Fox and Rabbit. Do I think that's the right fabric for this? So the picture, I will show you the picture. I wasn't going to bother because you can see the finished thing, but. So here's the picture and here's my version. So salt bush is a little grayer than it looks like in the picture. Um, but as I examine the picture, I don't think things show up better or worse in it compared to my version. So I think it's fine. I think it's good. I really like this salt bush, actually. And this little piece down here could become something, couldn't it? I haven't figured out if it can become... So here are the ideas I have to work on my next first weekend. One is this... This is called Waiting for the Harvest. Same book. Sorry, I think I'm wiggling the table. Yikes. Yeah, I had to move the table. I mean, this house has been in upheaval, as I'll tell you later, so I'm sorry. Hopefully that's not disturbing. It's not very big. This is um, 89 by 51 stitches. 
And I think that I could do it on the bottom of that if I didn't cut the sampler off. Another thing I wanna do that's in this book, I'm trying to find the pieces without, I mean, really, I wouldn't mind doing pretty much everything in this book. This little bag, I think is very pretty. And I might do this as a um, as my smalls exchange item for the Great British Sampler weekend next fall because it's gonna be in October, so it's autumn. And it has some acorns and it has a bird and it has a blackbird looking vase thing. So, but there are a lot of great projects in this in this book. So I'm sure I'll do something else about, and I have other Blackbird, Blackbird books. At some point I did show a lot of Blackbird stuff that I own, which is a fraction of what there is. And then the other thing I, I have to show is Sampler 193. I have just come up, I'm just a, like a, maybe 50 stitches from being 90% done. So well, that's, this is definitely gonna be finished. 3,200 stitches left, I think, you know, give or take. So I'll show that again. Isn't that stunning? It's great in person, and in this case, it's even better on the, in the picture. So that I'll work on, keep working on. I intend to finish it this year. So I didn't do any other stitching. So, and there are reasons. There are reasons I have my excuses, so you'll have to hear me out. And again, I'm wiggling the table. Um, here's why. So last Friday, I made, the, I made the video. I told you about our son and daughter-in-law, and that evening, I think it was, they called us. Uh, they have a big battery that, a power bank kind of, I mean, a big power bank kind of battery that her dad is letting them use. And he also brought them a generator that runs on gasoline so they can run their sump pump and they can use the generator to charge the battery. And they use the battery to run their microwave a little bit and to charge their devices and to turn on their, um, they have a cell booster thing that lets them have cell service. Normally they need the booster and they really need it now because cell service is quite spotty still up there. So they turn it on for you know an hour every evening and make all their con all their contacts with people and um, we were on the list that night and they wanted to uh, come and have a vacation from their roughing it situation. I think it was Friday. It might have been Saturday that they called. Anyway, they wanted to come Wednesday, this past week, Wednesday, and um, and leave today, which is what they did. And so they came, they said, we're gonna bring, I said, so after the initial phone call, we were texting back and forth because texting requires less cell signal capability. So there was a little bit of texting and I, said, what do you want to do when you're here? Be bold, you know, don't shy back and, um, and not tell us things that you would really like to do or accomplish or us to do for you while you're here. And Scott said, wow, that's, sorry, if you can hear that, that's our washing machine out of balance, has a load of towels. Um, my husband might be here. He might hear that and go fix it. Anyway, Scott said, here's what we want to do. We want to do laundry. We want to take showers. We want to charge everything. We want to eat. And we want to hang out with you guys. And so we did those things. We accomplished them all. And one of the days, I said, so let's add to it. I want to show you an effective way to light your solo stove, which they've been cooking on. I think I showed a picture last week of that. And um, we want to give you a gas stove top type thing, a gas cooker, because when it's raining, you can't use the solo stove to cook on. So I spent 
the better part of a day over the course of a few days, you know, few, several hours over the course of a few days, trying to get our Coleman camping stove to work and then trying to get Cindy's Coleman camping stove to work. Neither of them works. They're both broken in different ways. It is possible to order parts for them, which I think at least mine needs a part and Cindy's may also need a part. Um, but I called up a friend and said, you're a, a stove guy. What can you tell me about Coleman stoves? He said, they're old technology. People are not using them. They're using the ones that use the little one pound propane tanks. So I researched that and then he sent me a link to a burner setup that you would put on a tabletop that uses a tw that gets propane from a regular propane tank that you can get refilled like you would use on your gas grill. So I contacted Scott and said, is this something you would want? And you know, their delay and when they turned on their booster, they were, he said, sure. So we ordered it and it came the next day from Amazon. And so that was another thing on the list was to try that out and make sure that it worked. We gave them a propane tank and that thing with the instructions that if it just doesn't work for you, if for some reason it doesn't suit your needs and you learn of somebody who needs something like this, please give it to them. So that was taken care of. We also went over to our church. Our church did a, um, is still doing this coming Sunday as well, a um, donations drive for money and for particular supplies that are needed for um, relief in that area in Western North Carolina. Our two churches that we're partnering with happen to both be in North Carolina, one in Asheville and one in Swannanoa. Swannanoa apparently was just practically, I mean, obliterated is probably too strong, but what I hear is a, so much damage. And um, so very particular things, not just emptying your pantry into a box, but very particular things that were needed. And the woman who was organizing it at our church bring, said, bring your son over and have them look at what we have and take back what they things that they would find useful or that they know people in their community need. So Scott went over with me and picked up a grocery bag full of things for themselves and for others. And it's fantastic what people have donated. Um, and I think that apparently they, um, when they came back from visiting her dad, it would have been 10 days ago, that they were there. They um, stopped by a Walmart on the way back and picked up a bunch of cans of infant formula because that they knew of somebody, I think, who needed it. And that's something that's hard to come up with. Of course, you also need clean water. I asked them about water. They said there are flats of water bottles uh, been brought in and are available at fire houses and places like that that have set up to help folks so that water that you cannot drink the water out of your own system and if you have a system their system is a well that runs on a pump that runs on electricity um, but they can get bottled water up there so we did send them back with some gallons of water but it doesn't really it doesn't amount compared to what you ought to be using in the course of a normal day what we sent with them was not much. And compared to what we just used without thinking about it uh, in our city water situations, hmm, I said to them, so these gallons, we refresh them every year for hurricane season. We use the old part, you know, the water that's been in the gallon jug. We use it for something and we refill it with fresh water. And we haven't done it this season yet. We should have, right? It's already October. So we'll do that. I said, and I guess we're just gonna pour out the water because we don't have a big pot of pasta to make. We don't have toilets to flush at this exact instant. And it felt so profligate to just pour perfectly good water right down the drain when there are 
millions of people, millions, hundreds of thousands of people in this area that was hit by Hurricane Helene and now Milton down in Florida, who would have loved to have that water that was a year old. You know, that would have been better than anything they have access to, easy access to. But anyway, we sent them on their way. Now we're doing our laundry. We have guests coming this evening at seven or so, 7.30, um, to spend the weekend. There's a wedding this weekend, so we are turning over the sheets and so on. Um, the washer is going. You, as I said, the washer is out of balance with a load of towels. And then we'll do our own laundry. And so these guests leave Monday morning, and I leave Tuesday morning for um, school girl, school girl samplers of Western New York. And I'm going to put a picture here of Jane Boyer, 1834. This is a picture Leslie sent me yesterday, which is the antique, which is the larger one and the model, which is the one I stitched, which is on 40 count, um, 40 count vintage country mocha with DMC threads, except for, well, it's DMC and Swalserfine. Yes, that's right. Um, it's just astonishing to see those two things together. And I will see the original, the antique next week when I go. I will also see the next one that I hope that Leslie and I will do um, when I'm there because we're gonna visit the uh, the Leroy Historical Society. Also visiting Hobby House Needleworks. I have never been there. So in addition to the things that uh, Scott and Natasha and I did, and we played some video games and Scott and I played cribbage, I did skunk him by one point. It was amazing. I made cookies, which the favorite, their favorite kind of cookies are, is this kind. Molasses spice cookies. Isn't that just beautiful? What a beautiful cookie that, that recipe puts out. I was gonna put the recipe in the comments, but I realized it's a copyrighted recipe by um, America's Test Kitchen. America's Test Kitchen. And you can log in to their website and look up soft and chewy molasses spice cookies and you'll find the recipe. I also have found other recipes that are not behind the paywall, paywall that are so similar to this one that I think you could search for any soft and chewy molasses spice cookie and find a recipe that was going to be very good. And I'm just gonna verbally tell you what the ingredients are. Do I have it memorized? Probably. Um, cream, three quarters of a cup of butter with a third of a cup of white sugar and a third of a cup of brown sugar. Add a teaspoon of vanilla and one egg yolk and half a cup of molasses and beat that, beat that well till it's all incorporated. Then add the flour and spice mixture, which consists of this. Um, two and a quarter cups of flour, half a teaspoon of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt, which I use close to a half a teaspoon of salt, one and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon, one and a half teaspoons of ground ginger, half a teaspoon of ground cloves, a quarter teaspoon of ground allspice, and a quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper. I am impressing myself. That is, I mean, really, I think I have all that right. And so then you end up with this cookie dough that you, I use a cookie, cookie scoop, you know, one of those OXO, mine is OXO. That is a life-changing thing, that scoop. I'm doing this because that's what you do. You squeeze the handle and the little thing swoops around in there and drops a nice little round ball of dough. You put that in um, more granulated sugar, white sugar, and then bake it at 375 for about 10 minutes, 11 minutes. 
you take it out before it seems done. Um, and then you let it sit on the baking sheet for five minutes before you take it off and cool it on a wire rack, wire rack. And it turns out like this. So we gave them most of the batch to take home and we have some. So that's what we did. Anyway, Schoolgirl Samplers of Western New York. Yes, that's this coming week, a week from now. Um, and I fly on Tuesday. I return home on Monday, a week, you know, 10 days from now. And while there, I'm going to go to Hobby House Needleworks and get the kits and other things ready, anything ready that Leslie needs my help with and finish preparing my little talk, which as I said to someone, you know, I, I don't have any trouble talking. The question will be whether what I say is pertinent and interesting. So I, I'm gonna, I have a PowerPoint, I'm gonna have a PowerPoint that will have pictures in it I don't think I'm gonna write out my talk in advance because I don't really do that, as you can tell. I hope it won't be a disaster. It won't be a disaster. I hope it will be fine. <laughs> and um, we're going to, as I said, we're going to Hobby House. We're gonna have lunch with Leslie's father who is, uh, one of my, I mean, my, her mother and my mother were childhood friends, so he, I've known him my whole life. Or he's whole, he's known me my whole life. And of course, you know, I don't have any memory of him before I was probably three or four, but I definitely remember him from all my childhood. And um, I haven't seen him in several years. So that'll be very nice to see him. And uh, some people from our, Great British Sampler Weekend event last fall are going to be there. That's just so exciting. And um, it'll be great to see them. We were at a table together. We enjoyed each other. As I think, this seems to be what happens at these retreats. You meet people that you've never met before and you enjoy each other and you, to some degree, stay in touch sometimes. So it's really great. So that is what's happened. Um, what will happen is I will not make a video next week, but I will make a video the following week, which I can't think of what the date's gonna be, but close to the, you know, the 24th or something of, um, October 23rd, maybe, 25th, you know, a Friday, that Friday. And that will be during the state fair. So the things that we've taken to the state fair, we will have dropped off at the state fair, which Cindy and I are going tomorrow. We'll know by then what the outcome is on any of those. I don't think any of our things are gonna win um, ribbons. Be, Cindy's cross-stitch might, actually, because it's so beautiful. But that's not really why we enter. I also just learned of another fair in North Carolina called something like the Traditional Fair, North Carolina Traditional Fair, or something like that, which seems like it might be a, you know, I don't know why it would exist. It is going on now. I'd never heard of it, but I now bookmarked their site so I can look into how to enter next year because maybe we'll try to enter things in both fairs. There is a way, North Carolina State Fair allows you to enter things that you can't get out of another place that's exhibited until after the drop-off time for the North Carolina State Fair. So I know that there, they must be taken into account the fact that people have items in county fairs or other exhibits of that sort and can't get them until the Sunday, say. So anyway, 
Anyway, that's a lot of babble, but you're used to me babbling, aren't you? I don't really think I have anything else to talk about today. I'm gonna to carry on. I, one of the things I have to decide is what stitching that is already going am I gonna to take to Leslie's to, for this week that I'm gonna be gone. I need to take something that is easy to do on my um, portable light and then it doesn't have too many colors. So I might take sampler 193, possibly. I mean, I don't think I'd do 3,000 stitches on it. That's an awful lot of stitching. But I would make some good progress on it if I took it. I might take uh, something to start. And, you know, I'm going to be at Hobby House Needleworks. <sighs> Maybe I'll... I don't know. I don't know. I know one thing that's on my list for Hobby House is to buy a piece of fabric that I can do that um, piece I showed a few weeks ago that is the Jane Greenoff fold-up sewing kit thing that all folds up and has stitching on it and beautiful. I'm going to use red um, lining for it. And it takes a pretty long piece of 32 count linen, which I don't have that piece. I don't have that piece, but I'm sure Hobby House does. And I'm gonna take my um, 36 count, just the ticket, I think is what I have. Yes, I'm pretty sure that's it. That's by um, Tabby Cat Linens, and that's what Harriet Green calls for which is the Hands Across the Sea Queen of the May 2024 that Leslie and I are starting in January, on January 1st, possibly. Although, you know, we're gonna have things going on here. This Christmas, this coming Christmas is gonna be a normal one, um, Lord willing. So anyway, I have to make some lists. I have to finish my talk. We're gonna have company that's gonna throw things off, um, but it's great. It's great. And, you know, we're so thankful that we have water to waste, that I can leave the lights on, forget to turn the lights off. Our refrigerator is just humming away, keeping our food cool. Um, the weather is cool. The weather is glorious. In fact, I may start a fire again in a little while. We, Scott and I sat around the fire last night after, um, after I started. It showed him how I started, and it just goes perfectly. It's just such a beautiful day. Anyway, that's all folks for now. Many blessings to you.